Hi everyone, I know I haven't said this in a while, but this is the BEST TEETH IN THE GAME! No one in the reviewing game got better teeth than your boy! Um, and it's time for a review of the new Beach Fossils album, Somersault. Beach Fossils are a Brooklyn band that debuted with a self-titled album back in 2010 that was at least partially responsible for the influx of jangly, dreamy, lo-fi indie rock that has been plaguing the music scene for the better part of a decade. It honestly led to too many bland, reverb-soaked beachcombers to list out in a single video. Beach Fossils, though, kind of showed themselves to be above the fray with their follow-up record a few years later in 2013, uh, Clash the Truth. And I actually loved this record, even though at this point in 2013, I had already decided that I, I didn't like most groups sort of chasing after this sound. But Beach Fossils really came through with an album that had a wider array of guitar tones than most of the bands sort of uh, approaching albums in this style. Uh, I would also say some better production too. Definitely a wider array of influences as well as it seemed like Beach Fossils were pulling post-punk into the fold on this album. Not only did I like the music, but certainly I commended the band for building on the very simple and highly copied blueprint that they delivered on their debut album that they simply could have repeated on their next record and had pretty much gotten away with it. And of course, since I enjoy the band's last LP, I'm looking forward to the next LP, even though it did take four years to arrive. And on this one, the band seems to be treating listeners to yet another change in sound. Indie rock and jangle pop still very much seem to be a cornerstone of the group sound, that has not changed, but the stark, dark, and kind of moody post-punk edge of the band's last record has kind of evaporated. It's been swapped out for something that feels to be more akin to the sunshine pop of the 60s. A good chunk of the tracks on this album are delivered with this kind of uh, very bright, very blissful aesthetic. Occasionally some arranged instrumentation or keyboards pop into the track too, just to add some extra texture and some depth. There's some subtle nods to psych pop on the album as well, I would say. Especially on tracks like Closer Everywhere and Tangerine and St. Ivy, which also has like subtle touches of Baroque pop as well. And of course these tracks sit shoulder to shoulder with songs that have a more pure jangle pop sound. But the band still makes sure to work in more instrumental detail than a lot of their contemporaries to keep things listenable and engaging. It's not just simply a plain drum beat and a driving bass line and a twangy, repetitive guitar lead that becomes mind-numbing before the song is even over. Beach Fossils are doing much more than that. In fact, I would say the closest they come to even phoning it in on this album is probably the track May 1st. Oh, or the song Down the Line, which is like borderline that, as it is the most scant track on the entire record. And with the inclusion of tracks like Rise on this record, which uh, features these jazzy saxophones and this completely unexpected, sensual, and very romantic spoken word passage, as well as the song Be Nothing, which is this hard, driving, and very uh, brittle and distorted at points, a tense piece of rock music that reminds me a lot of uh, some new wave music, kraut rock music too. Beach Fossils continue to prove that they're not just trend setters, and certainly not trend chasers either. They're working in details that their similarly dreamy contemporaries aren't, like the song Social Jet Lag, which is mostly built off of like these easygoing, very funky drum beats and uh, grand, slow piano chords. You know, there are a lot of things I could compliment this album on. I could call it Beach Fossils' most instrumentally lavish album, because it is. I could call it Beach Fossils' most mature album, because it is. I could say that I really like the flow of the album, because I do think there is a lot of sonic variety here. Some of the tracks segue into one another decently. But very little of this album is actually exciting me, lighting a fire for me, uh, really begging me to come back, honestly. Because I don't really enjoy much of the 60s pastiche that the band uh, sort of paints these songs in. I think a lot of it feels really surface level, uh, just like window dressing. And the Rise interlude, as out there and as bold as it is, it's a really silly moment on the album that I can't take seriously. I think it really kind of derails the vibe of the record as it's just so alien to the rest of the album. And I find so many 
many of the vocal performances on this thing really drab too. And I get it, Beach Fossils have never had the strongest vocal performances, uh, I, uh... But I guess the vocals felt at least a little more direct on the band's last album. I mean, part of the appeal for that record for me was that sure it was dreamy, sure it was kind of easy going, but there was just enough bite to it to make it a little sticky, a little catchy, kind of addictive. The tension in the performances also gave the, the tracks here a bit of momentum, a bit of energy. Somersault is so much breezier by comparison, which is not necessarily a bad thing, especially if the bliss the record is delivering is intoxicating, but n not necessarily the case a lot of the time, in my opinion. There are a few moments where the bliss of a track really hits me and sort of seems to make the song worthwhile, like Tangerine and Sugar, but a lot of the songs here, for me, they just kind of feel like a cold fish. Even though I do enjoy a lot of the instrumental and musical extras throughout this album, which, again, they're good, but uh, they're really kind of just a distraction at the end of the day from the fact that the very core of these songs, the lyrics, the writing, it's, it's just okay. It's a little bland. It's kind of just standard jangle pop shtick. You know, I get that the band is trying to do something a little bit different. They are experimenting, uh, they are adventuring, they are taking some risks, but not all of them pan out into truly compelling songs, especially in the second half, which I think is noticeably weaker uh, than much of the material the band delivers in the first. As far as records in this style go, you could do way worse, but personally, I'm just kind of indifferent toward it. I'm feeling a strong five to a light six on this thing. Tran. Zishin, have you given this Beach Fossils album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best. You're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Just leave an angry comment in the comments if you're angry. Videos next to my head that you should check out. Subscribe to the channel. Official website too. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Stay hydrated and get a good night's sleep and eat your fruits and vegetables forever.